So let's get started. And uh, the first of all, uh, thank you for a kind introduction, uh, the Mr. Watanabe. Uh, the, it's always uh, my pleasure uh, to be here with uh, Rieti. Today, I'm supposed to uh, comment on the latter, uh, second uh, part of the, the Mr. Kazuki's presentation. So therefore, I'm going to uh, share my uh, a few words uh, the regarding the trade remedies in Japan. Okay, so next slide. So as Mr. Kazuki explained, uh, uh, use of the trade remedy measures have been increasing for the past couple of years. Uh, this is explainable by the uh, current economic downtown all over the world caused by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And we have experienced a similar increase in use of uh, trade remedies in the time of, for example, uh, 1997 Asian financial crisis and the 2008 uh, global financial crisis. Next, please. The trade remedies, in particular, anti-dumping and the counter-bearing duties are often described as a tool to tackle unfair trade practices. Partly this is true, but I believe uh, that, that the explanation is one-sided sometimes. So currently, uh, the 164 countries have acceded to the WTO and the membership comprises the country of a great variety of economic systems. For example, we have a developed economies, uh, emerging economies and uh, developing and small economies. Some members are market economies, other members adapt state capitalism. So even among two similar Western style market economies, there would be many differences uh, in regulatory conditions and uh, government uh, the policies that, uh, which would result in the differences in the cost structure even in the same industry, for example, still. Uh, once Professor John Jackson, uh, who is widely known as the founding father of the WTO and uh, happened uh, to be my mentor in the Georgetown Law Center, uh, describes the trade remedies as an interface between the different economic systems. This very keen insight was expressed even before the establishment of the WTO. It, it was uh, 1989, I guess. So according to uh, the Professor Jackson, the trade remedy plays a, a buffering role in order for the uh, members in the various economic systems to coexist in the single WTO system. Next slide. Okay, so regardless of the usefulness, uh, so far Japan has seldom had because to the trade remedies, as uh, Mr. Kazaki already explained. The number of our imposition of uh, these measures are exceptionally small and are for that of the third largest economy in the world. <clears throat> this is partly because our traumatized experiences regarding the trade remedies. In the old GATT era, especially in uh, 1970s and 80s, we used to be a big target of the anti dumping and countervailing duties imposed mainly by the United States and the European Economic Community at that time. But for that reason, the Japan, uh, for, for that reason, in Japan, trade remedies have been regarded as a policy tool for the protectionism. So competitiveness in our manufacturing industry was another reason for the Japan's limited use of trade remedies. Simply, we didn't need to do so because our products could compete with uh, the imports uh, the without um, trade remedies. So therefore, uh, Japan was eager to reinforce the uh, discipline on the trade remedy during uh, the euro round. And even uh, at the early stage of the Doha round, the, from the viewpoint of a, a target country. Next slide. And this sentiment changed as the rise of China and other emerging economies become more salient in early 2000s. Uh, for Japan, the turning point was the imposition of the provisional safeguard measures on certain agricultural imports, mainly from China in 2001, which was followed by anti-dumping duties on the Korean polyester staple fiber uh, next year. Uh, if you looked at the uh, number 15 of the uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Kazuki's PowerPoint, uh, Japan has been invoking a trade remedies constantly uh, ever since then. In the old GATT era, uh, we never imposed any uh, trade remedies at all. Therefore, uh, even though uh, the number is still uh, small, the progress for the, the, the past 20 years is a remote, uh, uh, very remarkable. 
And alongside the increase in the investigation and the imposition of the measures, <clears throat> and, uh, Japan has also uh, has been a continuing improvement of the investigation procedures. The once Japan Japanese industry uh, the seemed to, uh, to feel it burdensome to file a petition for the initiation of a trade remedy investigation. So it is partly because the uh, uh, mentality that I have explained about, but also uh, the prerequisite for the petition were in fact uh, very restrictive. So for example, uh, Japan's domestic regulation on ADD and CBD uh, used to, to require more support for the petition uh, to initiate an investigation from uh, procedures, uh, producers uh, in the domestic industry uh, than uh, the WTO agreement. The 2011 amendment to the uh, ADD CBD guidelines relaxed this uh, the excessive domestic support uh, requirement uh, to conform uh, with the WTO agreement. Uh, the 2016 amendment to the uh, ADD CBD regulation also relaxed the requirement for uh, producers' associations to file collective uh, the petition for investigation on behalf of the domestic industries. The most recent 2017 amendment to the ADD CBD regulation also reduced the data and the information uh, required for the petition uh, for investigation. Next slide, please. Uh, another impediment for the, the protect, uh, prospective petitioner is the anti-monopoly law. Sometimes the producers concerned inevitably need to discuss their corrective application uh, for investigation <clears throat> because such talks sometimes uh, touch upon uh, the information about pricing. This could be the deemed as a cartel in violation with the anti-monopoly law. To get rid of such a legal uncertainty, the media published the, the hypothetical uh, the case of the corrective application, which gives uh, the prospective petitioners a hint of do's and don'ts in preparing a corrective application. But also the document has no legal effect. Uh, it provides a guideline corresponding to the Noah Pennington doctrine established by the US Supreme Court. Now, finally, uh, the, the media has intensified outreach for domestic industry recently. <clears throat> Only a limited number of Japanese manufacturers are aware of uh, usefulness of trade remedies in their business strategy at their top management level. So, uh, <clears throat> METI has repeatedly you know, held uh, uh, seminars for the business to publicize the trade remedy systems, established a desk for consultation, and is providing a data regarding the supply demand, uh, the, the trends of various products and as a useful uh, information at, uh, at the uh, METI website. Next slide. For further promotion of trade remedies, uh, the, the Subcommittee on the Trade Remedies of Industrial Structure Council, uh, which is uh, the METI's advisory body of expert, published a proposal uh, for more active use of countervailing duty just last week. And that has been already you know, uh, 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 introduced by the, uh, explained by the Mr. Kazaki. Okay, so next slide. In addition to the domestic effort, and Japan also attempts uh, to combat unfair trade practices and by international cooperation. The 2000, in 2017, Japan showed its initiative to set up the Trilateral Trade Minister meeting. In January uh, 2020 meeting, uh, this meet, uh, forum agreed on the element of uh, amendment to the, uh, uh, the current uh, WTO subsidy uh, agreement. Uh, this includes uh, expansion of the, the list of prohibited subsidies introduction of a list of uh, situations where uh, out-of-country benchmark can be used regarding the governmental uh, provision of goods and services, and uh, redefinition of a public body that whose uh, subsidies are uh, subject to uh, WTO rules. So while these elements, uh, if successfully and incorporated into the WTO subsidy agreement, will contribute to the better use of a CBD. The trilateral meeting should pay more attention to uh, the procedural aspect of CBD. Uh, the currently, the operated body is defunct 
And unfortunately, I mean, this status quo will continue for, uh, for the time being. So accordingly, rather than uh, the WTO dispute settlement, CBD imposed by each WTO member is more effective to combat industrial subsidy and ensure level playing field. So therefore, I would urge the trilateral meeting to discuss uh, the cooperation between their investigating authorities, including exchange of information regarding the third country subsidies and concerted action uh, in the uh, CBD investigations. Next slide. In conclusion, my message here is the, that uh, active use of the trade remedies is necessary for leveling playing field, uh, especially among the WTO members uh, with a great variety of different economic, economic systems. Having said that, my comments developed here uh, by no means encourage protectionism. All the measure and investigation must be the WTO consistent as a matter of course. WTO agreement regarding the trade remedy has been already sufficiently clarified by a, a number of panel and appellate body reports. So uh, finally, I, uh, so, uh, I, I recommend the Japanese investigating authority to observe the relevant WTO jurisprudence. Thank you very much.